so hello all hello folks uh, today uh, we'll be having an overview or uh, we'll be having a complete session on basically constructing machine learning pipeline using scikit-learn so i hope uh, you guys have some idea on machine learning and uh, scikit-learn or sklearn as we uh, use in uh, data science uh, but if you don't even have an idea of that i will try to explain it from scratch like how to build a machine learning pipeline and what are the ml pipelines and if you have some experience then uh, i will help you to improvise your concepts and tell you more use cases where uh, these pipelines are built and how it helps you during a uh, development of your production level course right so a uh, brief about me uh, my name is anush jhandial i'm a data scientist at ibm I hold total uh, 6.7 years of work experience. Uh, my area of expertise lies in machine learning, NLP, natural language processing, and deep learning. Uh, my hobbies are traveling. I love to travel and have short acquaintances with people where I meet and uh, try to learn something new from, uh, from them. And uh, then I love to go to gym to keep myself physically and mentally fit. And uh, that's all about me. Uh, during the session, you can ask the questions. And I think uh, at the last, we'll be accumulating all the questions and try to answer you. Uh, feel free to ask as many questions as you want so that your concepts are clear and uh, you basically have some fruitful uh, knowledge after attending this session. So uh, this is the table of contents. We'll be going through a machine learning pipeline. What exactly is a machine learning pipeline? Then how uh, scikit-learn helps to build a ML pipeline. Then the flow diagram of a pipeline, how um, ML pipeline looks like, like what are the various steps or how, to, how you need to build up that. And then we'll be going up to the pipeline concept and a column transformer. That is a key concept while you are building any machine learning pipeline. A column transformer is something you need to be aware of how to use that and when to use that. Then some of the use cases where machine learning pipeline uh, can be uh, used. And then uh, some examples going forward. And then uh, the most important thing is a custom uh, machine learning transformer, right? So uh, this is the main thing just because uh, you try to deal with the real world data set where uh, there are many uh, pre-processing or feature engineering techniques you need to apply in them. Then you need to build a custom uh, machine learning transformers where in the pipeline you can have that transformer and that can do the required task for you. Well, uh, when I will go to this topic, I'll try to explain that. And then uh, we'll have some hands-on session. We will have a, basically a Python level code that, con uh, that basically explain how to construct a ML pipeline and what are the various steps involved in that, what are the libraries we are using. And then in the last, we'll have a short Q&A uh, where you guys can uh, pitch in your questions and I will try to answer them, right? So going forward with the session, uh, just a minute, if I can minimize this. Yes, a machine learning pipeline. Now, exactly what is a uh, machine learning pipeline? Uh, it's it's a basically, when you talk about a pipeline, uh, the first thing that comes up to your mind is something, uh, a series of steps, right? Uh, it can be parallelly executed, it can be serially executed, but there will be series of steps, step one, step two, step three, and finally attaining the last objective of your uh, complete workflow. So it's, it's exactly the same. It's a workflow where you have the data, and then you have to create a model out of that, right? A machine learning model. Now, there will be various steps involved in that, right? Whenever you have a data source, uh, first that data source will be help to ingest the data. Then you need to perform some data cleaning. So if you have some background in machine learning, then you must be aware what is data cleaning and data pre-processing. If not, then I will try to explain you. So suppose you have a data. Now, uh, the data in the raw form uh, can never be used uh, while building up any uh, ML model, right? You have to perform various data processing, right? Now, what I mean by data processing, data cleaning is uh, in a data where uh, some, some kind of data you are recording, right? You are uh, recording temperature of each and every day, right? So now there can be some values that are missing, right? Uh, so uh, suppose a tool is recording the temperature of every day and sometimes uh, that tool is not working, right? So uh, some data points will be missing. Now, how to fill that record? Because uh, while building up any model, you need the complete data. You can't have, okay, uh, I, I'm having a, a three years data, but one year data is missing in that or, or some data points inside of some months are missing. You need to fill that data, right? So uh, this data missing is a, is a kind of technique you follow for data pre-processing stage. Then data cleaning, data cleaning, you need to clean the data, right? So now uh, data can be in any form. You need you have to actually transform the data so that you can use in your uh, ML pipeline, so that you can actually use it in your model. So these are the various steps you need to perform on the data so that data becomes suitable for, uh, for your input to the model, right? So the, uh, first is data ingestion, then we talk about data cleaning, then data pre-processing, and then modeling, and then deployment. So today, we, what we'll be discussing is 
uh, except the deployment, the complete ML pipeline that is used to construct the complete workflow so as to create a pipeline or you can say an estimator or even a model. Uh, right so people term it as an estimator too so estimator is uh, only uh, uh, like you can term it as an ml model that you uh, use and uh, you can uh, further use it for according to your use cases right so to, today we'll be discussing about that how to build that right now each stage of the pipeline as it is clear like pipeline is a series of steps right so the output from its previous stage gets as an input to the next stage it's as easy as that right you have step one step two so in step two, the input will be the output from step one, right? So whatever processing or whatever uh, step you have performed on the data on step one, the further uh, process data will be flowing into the step two. So you need to be aware how to perform that and what are the key requirements when you perform these steps, right? Then uh, if you if, if in short term, you need to know like what is ML pipeline, then it's all it, it can also be considered a way to codify or automate the workflow, right? Now, uh, if you start building any uh, ML model or if you, if you have the data source, then uh, there are many ways to do that. It's not only that uh, from the first step only you need to create an ML pipeline. So it, it's a way exactly to do that. And that is the best suitable way whenever you are uh, productionizing your code and whenever you need to code in a proper manner, I would say, right? Uh, not not every component is uh, not in a in a in a in a particular way, which can be uh, which your code can be readable, right? So then you use the ML pipeline. But if your code components are scattered in a way and there are further changes, then it becomes quite difficult. That's why we use ML pipeline and we say that it's a way to codify and automate the workflow because you are automating, right? You need to perform three steps. You are automating it in a sense that in a less lines of code in a less number of lines and more readable code you are trying to achieve that right and in this you don't build and maintain a model right you rather you build and maintain a complete pipeline right so now if you are uh, doing various pre-processing steps uh, using any uh, pre-built uh, packages right uh, so if i can take an example of a min max scaler right what it does is a uh, min max scaler is a kind of scaling technique so uh, if you have a data, right, any data you can take and uh, that data values are not in a particular range, right? You need to convert them so that it, it's basically in the range of A to B, right? Now, why you do that? that that's basically a key concept to ml right you need to convert those values in a particular range from so that it becomes suitable for your data otherwise it will require more computing power or basically that level of data is suitable for your further machine learning workflow right so if you're trying to uh, apply a min max scalar on a particular column then you can easily do that using a ml pipeline also right the the one way is directly applying that on a column but if there are further number of steps right so when you build that you build that in the form of pipeline and now the final end product will be an estimator or a pipeline you can say or a model that you are trying to save it so that you can use it in the future for the prediction for the prediction case right you whenever you build a model in the future you use it for prediction so that how accurate your model is right so this was all about a machine learning pipeline now uh, we'll be more focusing upon how to build a ml pipeline using scikit-learn so uh, people here if understand like what is scikit-learn like the uh, people also term it as sklearn just because in python you have that package by the name of sklearn so people term it as sklearn or scikit-learn that is the same thing so for you uh, I've, I've, in the session i'll be using scikit-learn terminology but that is same as the sklearn if you want to further uh, apply this knowledge on the pragmatic approach then you can use that right so sklearn basically provides an elegant way to create a machine learning training workflow why because it has various functions it's enriched library in python and it provides various uh, functions for you so that you can use them and build your pipeline right and what scikit-learn pipeline will be it's a link of all the steps that we talk about a series of steps it what it will do it will shorten your code and like make it easier to read and adjust now uh readability of the code is a very important factor that we don't consider nowadays but yes it is very important just because in the future if any change needs to be applied in that pipeline or in that code so whether whenever you have a ml proper ml pipeline it becomes very easy because it's a kind of plug and play right uh you need to uh, apply a more uh, like more feature processing step you can easily insert into a pipeline or you you can try to remove that or you need to modify that it becomes quite easy rather than having a code in uh, which all the components are scattered it becomes very difficult so that is why ml pipelines are being considered in uh, various workflows and now the more enriched packages you get just like uh, 
uh, if I'll be talking about a hugging face package, like that is a package in NLP community, open source community, which can use it for various NLP tasks. Like, so they also have built a certain pipeline mechanism, right? Because it becomes very easy to use that and it becomes very easy for other people to use, right? They have open source that and you can exactly download it and easily use that by terming it as which pipeline to use the name of the pipeline and what model to use right so that's why these pipelines are now being considered at a high level and whenever you are uh, having your code and you want to certainly deploy it in the production in an organization or you are creating your own r d course uh, that it becomes very important to have those concepts in your mind while building up that course right now uh, definition of pipeline if you go to scikit-learn uh, official library it, it terms that sequentially apply a list of transforms and a final estimator now uh, they term it as quite technical terms but if you try to break it sequentially apply a list of transforms that means uh, in a sequence you need to apply a list of steps now list of steps means uh, first is you need to transform your data all of the feature processing steps you need to apply now in that they term it as transform so because you are building a transformer you are building a custom transformer or you are applying transformation on your data that's why they term it as a list of transform you need to certainly apply a list of steps right and a final estimator. Now, what is the estimator? Estimator is a model. So uh, if you talk about any data and you want to do classification on that, so the estimator you can use is a random forest, a logistic regression. These are the certain classifiers I'm talking about, right? So these are often term it as an estimator and estimator in itself is a model. You, you certainly have, you have already libraries that support you. You can build it from the scratch too, but there are uh, Python enriched libraries that helps you to import those models and directly use it, right? So sequentially apply a list of transforms and a final estimator. Now, the intermediate steps of pipeline must implement fit and transform methods and estimator must implement fit. Now, what does, what does that mean? This uh, in particular, I'm talking about because people try to certainly look at the official library and does not, does not understand the technicalities of the statements that are put, in, put, uh, put on that site. So I'm trying to explain that intermediate steps of pipeline must implement fit and transform. Now, every transformer, every transformation steps you are trying to build must have certain kind of two functions, right? One is fit, one is transform. Now, why they are important? Because every transformation steps, either you are using it uh, pre-built, just like I talked about min-max, uh, there is standardization, standard scalar. So these are the pre-built. And now if you're trying to build up your own, you need to build up your custom transform because there will be certain requirements where you'll be working with real world data sets and you need to apply a custom transformer. Just like if I will talking about any NLP data set, right? Uh, any, uh, any NLP use case and you have a certain kind of data where you have the sentences and you want to classify them. Now in this, certainly you need to perform custom transformation according to your domain use cases, right? So there is a domain use case of healthcare where you need to certainly uh, do some, some kind of custom transformation according to your use case and the domain of the data then you need to build a custom because the pre-build will not allow you to do that or they do not have the required functionality as per your use case, then you might try to build a custom transformer. That's why it becomes very important in the real life data set that you know about how to build that. We'll be discussing that, but here what I'm trying to make you understand is the transformers must have two kinds of methods, fit and transform, because whenever you try to fit your pipeline, the first method that is called is fit. And then the second method that is called is transform because first is try to fit your data and then transform the data according to whatever function functionality you have used in that. And the final estimator that is the model must implement a fit method. So it, it must have a fit method just because the whole pipeline or the whenever you uh, actually apply a dot fit method on a pipeline, first the transformation happens where uh, fit and transform occur and then you're fitting like your model is act, your data actually your transform data gets fit inside your model and your pipeline is ready. Now, further you can use it for prediction as your use case is, and you can do all, all, all kinds of steps, right? So that, that is the beauty of the pipeline. It tries to manage all of the workload that is required by you if, if a new data point is there. Rather than performing all of those steps by you, it tries to formulate what, what is the pipeline, what was the pipeline saved, it tries to pick up those models, apply those transformation, and then give you the final output value. So this becomes very easy for you, right? Now, uh, this is a diagram of a pipeline, a basic diagram I have put up uh, put upon so that you guys are not confused much. Input is the data, final is the prediction. Now, 
uh, let's see what inside in that right transformers one to k why what uh, this signifies is the various transformation steps so if you have a data and you apply three kind of transformation so basically transformer one transformer two transformer three three kind of transformations you are trying to build and then the final is estimator so estimator can be a regressor a regressor or a classifier it terms it at whether the use case is a regression problem statement of a or a classification problem statement right it tries to apply that on your, on your transform data and then it's try to build up the prediction so the basic the, if you if you try to understand the input is a data source the whole thing uh, actually indicated in the green uh, box is the pipeline and then you can use pipeline to actually further predict the new kind of values that will be coming right so this was all about what is a pipeline and uh, what is what are the various steps now uh, further deep diving into it we'll try to understand more because uh, uh, whenever you see a pipeline yes we are amazed that okay this is some kind of uh, functionality that is uh, readily available for us to use but how to use that and how to use it various functionality because every functionality comes with various concepts right you need to understand what are the various concepts okay so pipeline or custom uh, column transformer i would say uh, custom will be uh, having it in the last uh, slide deck so first try to understand column transformer now uh, when there was a pipeline what was the use of column transformer i will try to explain it when you short so pipeline with, uh, whenever you apply you apply a list of transformation so what happens uh, whenever you have a pipeline and you apply a list of transformation like i want to apply transformer 1 and transformer 2 two kind of transformation like two kind of actually processing your data or you can say feature engineering so whenever you apply in a pipeline uh if you have a data set it applies the transformation on all of your columns right uh, whenever you're using a pipeline it applies those transformation on the same column that that you need to do that so suppose uh there is a transformation and there is a data set a b c d i'm taking four features a b c d now there is a use case where you need to apply a different transformation on a a different transformation on b and a different transformation on c and no transformation on column d now this is a typical use case which you will find in your real world data it's not that uh, all kind of uh, like a single transformation can be applied to whole uh, data set no so suppose you have a, a uh, column and that is categorical now you need to convert that categorical column into numerical so as to process your data in a ml model right now there is a b that is in numerical state but it is not actually in the particular range like the values are spread out it's not a even distribution right so you need to convert convert that so that it it basically takes a values all of the values takes up a value between a to b so it becomes easy for the for further processing and there is a column c that uh, that in itself contains various null values it does not have uh, many recorded values and you need to provide a particular value so that all of the uh, attributes contain a significant value it, it contains a value so that it can be further given up to your model now these kind of use cases are very uh, much uh, you can say uh, very much like very much in use in organizations right uh, it, it it's all happen like whenever you have a real world data set you need to apply different kinds of transformation on different kind of columns right so then comes the concept of column transformer what what the beauty of column transformer is it helps you to transform each column set separately so uh, in a pipeline what was that whenever you are applying uh, or whenever you are applying a step it applies on the whole set of columns and then it tries to accumulate that right all of the columns are transformed but in a column transformer you can apply okay uh, i want to apply a transformation on a column this transformation this transformation on b this transformation on c and then accumulate it because at the end you need a whole transform data or a data set with a transformed columns of a b c d so that it can be an input to your pipeline so that's why the column transformer concept came uh, came on and it it was uh, very easy to use that right i will be explaining you through uh, the visual interpretations to how to exactly do that but let's try to uh, as of not rest try to understand why what was the use case of a column transformer right now a uh, column transformer as we know that it's a transformer so you need to implement a fit and a transform method right as as we discussed right in the previous slide the scikit learn official uh, uh, official page also states that you need you need to apply a sequence of steps to transformer and a estimator now here we are talking about a transformer that's why you need to implement a fit and a fit transformer or transform method you can see two kind of method you need to implement so that whenever you are trying to fit the data first the fit function will be called and then the transform function will be called right so here a short example is given so 
uh, the same kind of example I'm talking about, like uh, you need to compute the mean in column one and you need to basically one not encode. Now, what is one not encode? A brief overview, like whenever you have a categorical columns, right? Now, uh, a column with three kind of values, such as a column of size, right? You have, if you are taking a e-commerce data set, right? Now, shirt says size S, uh, small, medium, large, right? You need to convert them into numerical values. You can't just provide a ML model with a categorical column, right? So one not encoding is a particular technique. There are many more techniques, but here I'm only focusing upon a kind of transformation. So one not encode is a kind of transformation. You can apply on your column and make it convertible into a numerical value so that the further your model can take, take down it, right? Now it uh, it returns only column on which it has performed a transform. Now the one concept then in column transformer that can be uh, difficult for you is whenever you apply a column transformer, it only returns a column where you are applying a transformation. So it tries to forget all of the columns and take. So even if you are giving the column transformer your A B C D data set and you are trying to apply a transformer on A column. It will just uh, apply the transformation and give you the A column. It, it will just uh, try to forget the B, C, and D column. Now, this is a negative, but th there is also a way to deal with that. So it has an argument like what you want to do with the remainder columns, right? Just part that just uh, pass that parameter as pass through. That means apply my transformation on a given column name and just bypass all of the column as it is to the second transformation because second will handle those columns, right? So there is a argument I will, uh, like we will see how to pass this uh, basically parameter and where to pass this, right? Now the default value is drop. That's why I was calling whenever you apply a column transformer and you give down a column name, it tries to forget it. It tries to drop all of the columns. So that's why the default value is drop, but you can change that default value and make it as pass through. Now all of the columns, the various other columns will be uh, passing it through and the particular transformation will be getting applied on the data set. So this was about the column transformer that you can use. Now uh, let's try to understand uh, what is the what is the uses of like what 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 kind of uses uh, like the way the machine learning pipeline that we build. What what exactly is the use of that? Like why we need to build that? Right. The first question that comes up to your mind that I can also have a code where it performs all of those steps. Now what is the what is the, exactly the usefulness of doing that, right? Now, first is, is try to improve your ML model, see, speed up the development and operationalization. Now, speed up the development, yes, uh, rather than a scattered code, you have all of the code in a single pipeline and uh, uh, like a uh, beautifully synced in the number of steps. So it will speed up the development and operationalization, it will help you. Like in the further course of action, whether, whenever you will be deploying your models uh, in production, rather than having different kind of model for uh, transformations for every other activity, you will have a single pipeline. It, is, it, it will be easy to maintain the complete pipeline and for further operationalizing it in number of versions, right? In production, there are use cases where you further need to retrain your model. So retraining of the pipeline also becomes very easy because then you then you then it's easy to maintain the versions. Okay, this is my version one pipeline. And now uh, this is my version two pipeline. So that's why speed up the development and operationalization. Uh, create a convenient workflow. Now that is uh, that is all we understood out of pipeline. That it's very easy to create a typical workflow for that. So for the uh, for the other persons too, whenever someone looks at your code, it's very easy to interpret that, and it is basically in a workflow. So workflow, what I mean by workflow is a series of steps, right? So it becomes very easy. Like okay, uh, you have created an ML pipeline for this use case, and what are the kind of steps you have used? So it becomes easy in readability, easy in a workflow kind of step. And whenever you're writing your code, if it's in a convenient workflow manner, then it becomes very easy for further to replicate that work too. And uh, whenever you have any changes, so you can use it. So I think the th uh, let's let's jump onto the fourth point, flexibility. Flexibility is that only. You, you have various, uh, like you have the kind of flexibility where you can actually uh, remove a certain step, add a certain step. And if you want to modify it a bit, it becomes very easy in a pipeline. Code readability we have talked about and scalability. Now, scalability is also very uh, important key aspect of ML pipeline just because if you want to further scale it, so this, this kind of things uh, you get in organization, like uh, whenever there is a real world data set and you want to perform uh, a particular kind of transformation and it requires a heavy workload, right? Uh, a heavy computational power. So it becomes quite easy whenever you're using a machine learning pipeline to scale your, uh, to scale that particular part, right? 
so that's why scalability is also uh, also factor it has various factors i've talked about few just to make you understand what are the uses it has various uses now whenever you're using that there kind of there can be many uses for it so i've discussed few of them right uh, now just jumping on to the particular example because uh, yes we know that all the theoretical content is important and it is important for you to understand now whenever it comes to pragmatic approach of applying them uh, certain people gets confused right how to apply them so this is a this is a very uh, common example uh, if you have a data set and you want to apply a standard scalar on all of your columns and then there is a support vector classifier now this is a classifier uh, support vector machines uh, uh, this is a particular algorithm that is built up and it is readily available in sklearn or scikit-learn packages where you can exactly use them so what i'm trying to do is i'm applying i'm trying to apply a transformation called standard scalar it, it's basically a it's basically a, uh, a kind of transformation that converts your column in a defined range of minus one to one so that that's a particular defined range and it basically uh it, it's a kind of technique that hold together applies on your columns and it try to standardize all of your columns and then having the transform data it try to uh, give that data further into the classifier or a regression here i've used a classifier right so it's as easy right steps uh steps will be you know that it's a series of steps so steps will be a list object and then there are tuples so in python we have tuples uh, tuples are just uh you you can use the the curly curly brackets and you can specify what kind of value so you can create a tuple of two values three values so here we create a tuple of two values first is a terminology now this scalar is not something that if i have written scalar so you have to also write a scalar no it's according to your use that if you want to term it as a scalar you can put it as a scalar if you want to term it as transformation this is a basically, basically user defined name that i have given to a scaling component you can give it as any any, any name and the second is exactly the function the second thing is important uh, whenever you have the standard scalar is a pre-built package that is available in scikit-learn but now uh, as I've talked about custom, yes, I'll be discussing how to apply a custom transformation tool. So instead of standard scalar, you can have your custom transformer tool also and write a, write a given name. And scalar, you can always change it, right? And now the second, uh, like first is this step. And then now second step will again be a tuple with first value indicating a name given to a estimator. You can term it as an estimator with the model. And second is the function. Now SVC is a support vector classifier that is available in sklearn and it tries to uh, like it basically a classification algorithm so whether you whenever you have a classification kind of data set you can easily apply them on a data to get the result and if your data set is a regression problem statement then you can apply various regression techniques like uh, uh the, like the linear regression you can apply so that uh that's a kind of regression algorithm that applies on your data and try to give try to give the value according to your use case okay so now this sk learn this is the only pack that allows you to have a uh, have a functionality of importing a pipeline now pipeline accepts an argument called steps that is a list of tuple values and tuple indicates all of your steps so it's as easy right pipeline it will have an argument now uh, you'd play up with that you can create uh, one two three kind of various transformation but it's a list value list of tuples that that that's particularly defined by the package that it accepts a list argument and where the list will be tuple of values like values of tuple basically and the, the various tuple values you can indicate and now it will be serially executed right first the scaling happens then the classification building happens all of that so it, it's as easy to understand that pipeline is a uh, pre-built uh, package that is available for you you can import it and then you can pass them pass down a list of steps so uh, in the below i've written all of that that i've talked about right so uh, the only difference is whenever you have the pipeline ready you directly call the fit method and whenever you call this pipeline dot fit so the, what's the beauty of this is as soon as you call pipeline dot fit first the scalar will actually that the scalar component will work upon and internally it will call fit and internally it will call fit underscore transform right firstly fitting your data and then calling the transformation and then your svc classifier internally the fit method gets invoked right because your pipeline needs to be built so the whole pipeline is ready as soon as these two steps are uh, like the first scaling happens then your estimator fit fit happens and as soon as this is ready your pipeline is ready to use you can directly use our pipeline you can save it on the desk uh, save it as a model that you can use it uh, in the future and then you can directly call the predicts now 
uh, one more thing is if uh, you guys are aware about grid search and all of those types so now these are the kind of approaches where uh, we go to an extent where we kind of uh, like to find the hyperparameter so hyperparameters in a short term is the parameters of an algorithm so the actually the changeable parameter which you can tune it like the tunable you whenever you search it on a web uh, people term it as tunable parameter tunable parameters it you can certainly tune it right uh, these those are the hyper but before even doing that you need to understand the significance of that so a short example i will take it for you if uh, you guys understand what is random forest so random forest is a kind of uh, classification algorithm okay now it has various various tunable parameters right now one of the parameter is because random forest adds its name that is try to create trees like a forest is a collection of trees right random forest is also same a collection of trees right now collection of trees are collection of models so a tunable parameter called the depth of the tree depth of the tree indicates how long will your tree will be how long will your uh, the decision tree or you can say the in, in inside a forest how uh, how long your trees can be right so this is a tunable parameter that is called a hyper parameter but in order to find the see there are default values given by the packages but every now and then those default values won't work for you in real life use cases because those values are there for you to use but according to your use case it can differ right so somebody have different kind of data somebody would have different kind of data but all of those parameters are tunable that's why they are kept tunable you can actually tune them so a particular kind of approach is a grid grid search is a kind of approach where you can exactly find the most appropriate value according to your data set in simple terms according to your data set finding the most appropriate value of that hyper parameter grid search allows you to do that so i will not go deep into grid search that is a different topic whole together but yes in order for you to understand that is that is the grid search now uh the beauty of the pipeline is in, even if you have functions like grid search you can pass down your pipeline into that what it will try to do do that take your pipeline apply the series of steps and try to find the best possible kind of parameter so those kind of parameter you can also uh, you can also give the ranges okay uh, my depth of the tree would be somewhere between 2 to 20 find the best value okay it can also do that because then it will take less computational power the more wide range you give 1 to 100 1 to 500 the more computational power because it tries to find uh, it try to build the model for each and every possible value and then uh, see that okay what is the kind of uh, metric that is actually going to uh, suit your problem so if you have given your ac uh, accuracy as a certain uh, parameter then it tries to see that okay for which for which value for which hyperparameter value i'm getting the best set of accuracy that is the final hyperparameter value that you'll be trying to use so grid search is an algorithm that gives you the best uh, kind of hyperparameters and here why i discuss discuss about that is because grid search is something that uh, guys like you have to use it right whenever you are working with uh, data sets and uh, in your organization and you want to actually uh, fine tune your model you want to act actually build up a model that is more suitable to your use case you have to apply those techniques so that's why this pipeline is an argument to your grid search uh, packages to like get search first functions to and it tries to compute the best set of parameters so that's why the pipeline is important and is exactly uh, usable in various kind of functions available right so now uh, we have discussed about how to build a pipeline now let's try to understand uh, the concept we understood in uh, previous slide deck that what is a column transformer we had a look okay what is a column transformer now i guess everyone uh, here present should know that i've easily explained you what are the kind of transformation but now uh, you have a column transformer and uh, you need to understand how to build that pra practically you have the theoretical knowledge now this is the this is the more uh, of a uh, practical way of representing how to build build that now column transformer is easily available as a function in sklearn packages again now how you apply that so there is a there is a, a price column in your data set so your data set has various kind of columns out of that one column is the price and you want to actually impute the value so i was talking about the missing values right so uh, suppose you have a data set and there are regular prices that are being recorded for each and every day now some day the machine does not work and the price column is not even recorded what will happen right you need to take down that data in order to build the model 
uh, you can't just uh, give uh, NAN or zero values, even if you can provide it as zero values, but that will not be a more accurate model for you because that will be something uh, that will be more uh, relatable to the on the error side. That's why you build uh, a simple imputer is a package that tries to build up a strategy and strategy you can define. Strategies mean, that means mean of the prices it will try to impute. It will try to impute uh, whatever values you do not have, it will try to compute the mean of the column and it will do. So I'm not saying mean is the best strategy, but it, it's a kind of strategy. There are various other mean, median, mode, and even if you, you can apply a custom model to impute those values, that is the beauty of machine learning. So there are various kind of stuff, but here, uh, on a particular column applying a transformation so we have column transformer for again a list of steps list of tuples here the tuple is first is name second is a function and now in the square bracket i have given the column name now it can accept multiple because it can be right uh, you have two columns and you you want to impute the same kind of strategy you can pass it price comma a comma b on three of the columns you have to try to impute the same value right now, the key argument you can see here is remainder is equal to pass through. That means I am applying a transformation on my price column, but what happens to my other column? Just make it, just pass through the entire technique. I do not want to transform those columns. Those are the best available state for my model, right? So that's why remainder is equal to pass through is a key argument. And that I have uh, make, made you understand the default value is drop. So that's why if, if your transformation occur on a price column, all the other columns will be dropped. But you do not want that, right? Because this will be in itself is a kind of step you will be applying in the pipeline, right? So you do not want to play with that. Okay, my all other columns will be uh, dropped. You do not want that, right? So that's why a uh, column transformer is applied in this state. And you can do that uh, modification with various columns. We'll, we'll uh, having a hands-on session in order to understand that. Uh, I have written same right. Uh, whenever you have column transformer, when you fit that, you you uh, you know that in the behind that working, you should have two functions fit and fit underscore transform right. Fit in order to fit your data, fit underscore transform in order to apply that transformation. So it's a kind of data preprocessing steps too right. Uh, custom machine learning pipeline. Now uh, this is a uh, very interesting topic, guys. Uh, that's why I talked about uh, in the last because. Before that, you need to know what is ML pipeline, what is uh, column transformers, what is pipeline, and uh, there are function transformers too. I'll be talking about it in the code session because that are quite easy to use. As its name suggests, function transformers, just directly applying a function, right? Now, custom ML pipeline. Now, this is a this is a kind of pipeline where uh, you guys will be more into it because uh, these kind of pipeline in the real life use cases, you will have to build that, right? It's not always that uh, you want to use an imputer or you want to use a standard scaler. Uh, on more kind of data set that you have on organization, you have to build up custom techniques in order to clean that, in order to pre-process that, right? That's why you have custom L pipeline. Now here uh, in scikit-learn, we have a privilege. Uh, basically, it have already built functions that you can use that. And uh, there are two kind of classes that are already available that you can inherit in your, now inheritance, all of you guys should know that if you do not know it's a very easy thing like uh, you have class a class b you want to inherit the properties of class a so you you can have your class b and you can use the functionality of class a just easily by inheriting classes right that that's the beauty of inheritance so here also there are pre-built classes there are pre-built methods you can try to automatically inherit them in your class that you are trying to build it in a custom way right as easy as that so there it, it is very useful and we will try to see that rather than uh, having a theory. Uh, I will try to explain it through the visual interpretation. Right. Class custom transformer. Now, this is a custom class that I have created. Right. Now, custom transformer, I can easily write down anything, what, whatever suits my need. Right. Uh, in the brackets, this is a kind of inheritance. You are trying to inherit two classes, base estimator and transformer mixing from the SQL. So, from the SQL and only these two classes are there. You inherit those classes. Why? Because uh, I know that there are pre-built transformations, but I need to build a custom one. How to build the custom one? You are inheriting two classes and there are three functions. In it, we all know that that's a default constructor. Okay, you can write down anything so that uh, this is a transformation that has been called. Or in the, in the cases where you need to actually modify the features or you want to declare certain arguments, you can pass all of that knowledge in your init method. Fit. Fit is a method that you have to uh, actually inherit it and just uh, return cells that is the 
returning the instance of that uh, class only just because fit is a method that you have to uh, write down without this your custom transformation won't work you have to do that but the main function in this is transform now here the parameters is x y y because y is the target variable right uh, you you want to do your transformation on your uh, all of the feature set so here the transform functions you can exactly apply any kind of transformation now in this uh, you have a you have a column x x will have all of your features right you want to perform whatever kind of transformation you have to you can write down the custom code so this is a functionality will where inside the transform method you can write down your custom interpretation okay i have to square the column one and uh, basically uh, in column two i have to do this and then i have to return so return your transform uh, data and as soon as you have your pipeline this transformation will automatically call these methods you do not have to call it automatically they are called that that is the beauty of using an ml pipeline or a custom transform pipeline that uh, these are automatically called but the standard way of doing this is this you have to implement it in a way that you have to inherit base estimator and transformer mixing and then do that so that is the whole theory i have written i'll uh, i know that uh, we are also be running out of time so i will try to uh, go on to the code section too so that you guys have exactly the knowledge how to do that that whatever i have talked about here right so just a minute there before i go yes so uh we'll try to enlarge for you yes so see uh first is importing all of the libraries so uh, if you try to have a look at this code guys uh, i have used uh, certain packages but what what the kind of packages i will try to highlight here is sk learn right sk learn scikit learn or whatever you can say uh, these are the kind of packages compose pipeline impute preprocessing so sk learn that's why i say it's a very endless library in python so whosoever is working in uh, machine learning domain or data science domain you have to be aware about what kind of functionalities are there and the main thing is how to use that because people know that this is available but how to use that that is certainly a missing part that is in majority of the people and you need to have that so sk learn provides all of that now this is also uh, highlighting the custom ml pipeline classes that i try to say sk learn dot base uh, these are the transformation that are uh, sorry the classes that are available so as to build a custom transformer right now just i have created default data sets uh, default data set the this is exactly i'm preparing a data set which has few of the nan values too, so that we can understand how transformation happens right so price column a column b column this is easy i'm trying to build a custom data set so this is your data right it has price column it has a it has b now uh, my price column also has some nan values that means uh, non recorded values or null values a also has b also has now uh, just try to have a look at this right there is a column transformer i have built on an input price column and an imputer is mean so i have said okay on my price column now see only price column i am imputing rather other column i am saying that okay just pass through that a and b will not be changed only price column will be imputed now these nan values from for which value they will be imputed is the mean of this price column i have put down the strategy as mean there are other arguments to mode uh, median anything you can put down so this is a imputer and see the column transformer is as as soon as i try to build that fit underscore transformer i'm trying why i'm trying this is i'm trying uh, i want you to actually visualize and see what happens as soon as you do that and the remainder is passed through see what happens it gives you a data set a list of list with first column as imputed right because my first value was n a n c this is the mean and this mean is repeated wherever there was null values right so that's why i say it's not the best kind of strategy but here we are not discussing upon what will be the best imputing strategy here we are trying to understand how to do this right so see this values and see the second uh, column values na and in the third column also you will find na and right so a and b are unchanged you have applied a column transformer but a and b are unchanged and only the change column is price just because you gave that you can pass down a also a column will also be imputed you can pass down price a and b all of the columns will be imputed so but if you want to apply okay i want to apply an imputer call with a strategy b in second so what you can do is just try to uh, just try to this copy this yeah just try to copy this and uh, build down a strategy as median for a column now median value will be imputed in the uh, 
a column uh, values wherever there were null values right this is a first kind of column transfer but now uh this is the whole data set i have print now let's try to understand a variation what was i was talking about a column i want a median now on price okay i was uh, good that median value was there and i'm happy my null values are removed but my all uh, my other column i want to improve the median so do this and just pass down the column a now here one additional thing uh, that has been done here is remainder you understood that here uh, we have passed down it as pass through pass through means passing all of the columns as it is here what i have done is in the remainder also i have applied a computer i am said that let's try to impute a constant value with value minus one right now as soon as apply the fit underscore transform see this first value median uh, mean second null values are being uh, reported by median and third, whatever null values were there that are replaced by minus one. So the, as easy as that, right? If you try to do that, you try to impute A column differently, B, and then combine that. But in a column transformer, that is all in automatically way or the workflow steps are automatically done by that, done by the library. So that that uh, how easy it's uh, for you to build a column transformer. Now we'll try to understand column transformer with a python because as of now you have understood what is column transformer now i have tried to load a data a data set that is bind data set uh, that's that's all of the different properties of a bind and now this is a python see it, it appears very big to you but i'll try to explain you in steps no see understand uh this is a kind of series of steps first is the feature engineering feature engineering all of the pre-processing steps right first is column transformer here on uh, certainly you have tried to pick uh, i've tried to build names in the form of column so on the alcohol column you are trying to apply a drop on second malice uh like this malic acid you are trying to apply a min max scalar and you're passing down the column okay up because this is a terminology this doesn't accept the column name this we have given so that you can understand uh this is a basically column name this is also a column name and then on this uh on this particular uh value of the column attribute here you have applied a pipeline and in the pipeline there is a series of steps that are given log transformation in kbin so even if you apply a column transformation inside a column transformer you can easily have a pipeline because you have a use case where in particular column you have to apply a series of steps whenever you talk about series of steps there is a pipeline in place that's one of magnesium column i want to apply two steps that's why log transformation and came in and this was talking about functional transformer this is as easy as applying a function directly you want to take the log value of each and every so that is function transformer as the did not discuss in much in detail because it's quite easy to use so this is there is nothing uh different in this uh function transformer is the function uh syntax right now uh this is basically what you want to do with other column pass through and you have specified the column name too and the remainder what you will do is the standard scalar the remainder column all of the remainder column will be standardized right after this what i want to do is i want to perform pc you know pc is a kind of technique we're trying to reduce the number of columns i won't go deep into it because pc in itself is a different uh, topic hold together but what i was trying to explain is the whole pipeline is first the feature engineering then the pc happen and then finally is the estimator this random forest classifier so this algorithm will what it will accept is the whole transformation that happens out of this column transformer then out of this data see the guys column transformer ends here out of this whole transform data goes into the pca it tries to do certain so pca let's consider the black box for you the data the transform data goes the transform data comes out right and then as soon as the transform data comes out now next is the estimator or your model the random forest classifier and these are the arguments so these are the arguments you can tune it using grid search that i talked about in the slide but i've used this constant as of now to explain now this whole pipeline will be built as soon as you print it so this comes out right whatever steps will be and how to use it as easy as that you try to build x you try to build y x is all of the features y is target and dot fit so guys see dot fit and this whole transformation happens so rather than rather than you actually uh, like you actually you are triggering the all, all of the uh, steps like trigger step one trigger step two trigger step three the pipeline is in itself is doing for you that that's the beauty of ml pipelines right so that's why this whole pipeline will print and you dot you call dot fit and this pipe clf will be available then you can directly use it dot predict 
pass down your ads and the output comes out so that is that is the beauty right that is the whole uh, simplicity that has been given uh, uh, from the sklearn packages for you right a short uh, i think we have we have some time right so let's try to understand custom pipeline we have seen we know that how to do that guys but how to build it and build down a certain data set any random data set i've picked right and uh, this is basically nothing but uh, basically preparing or train x train by test x test by if you have uh, certainly worked on the data sets in uh, uh, machine learning domain you will understand what is train and test train is exactly the majority part of data you try to train your model and test is you try to check the efficiency of your model okay how efficient my model is because in the test data you have the actual values too and you try to predict those values and then you try to relate them okay how related my predicted values are to the actual values that you try to that's why you do this train and test now this is a custom transformer see i've built on a very basic transformer uh as we know um uh, inheriting the base packages in it i'm calling custom transformer initiated just for you to know in fit method nothing fit call on a custom transformer returning the self instance in the transformer c what i'm trying to do is having the x, x feature and just doing twice of square root of x any any mathematical operation right anything you can do and returning the transformed s right so this is a pipeline i have tried to build custom transformer c i can even give one custom transformer to feature in any this is the user defined name this is the transformer i have passed so it takes it if you try to pass it any class that does not inherit these method it will not take it right so this is uh, you have to do this do this in a pretty much defined way that is given right and then a linear model called linear regression right pipeline custom now see as soon as i call fit see i have a pipeline with two steps guys here i have not used column transformer i have just used custom transformer right i have called fit method now try to see train x train y i am fitting first statement that is called is fit called on a custom transformer right and then your transform called on a custom transformer like first your fit happens and then your transformation happens so as soon as you try to print, print this these are the steps that are executed right uh, my whole pipeline gets print and what what i have done in this pipeline and you can easily save it also using uh, pickle and uh, all of the libraries that are available but for you to understand how this happens the whole uh, thing happened and i think i have missed this right yes as soon as you create this pipeline you have not done it you have only created it this your constructor gets invoked right it is initiated initiated in a way that you have initialize an object you you understand what our class is an object so as soon as you initialize a class your con constructor gets invoked that's why this statement is written custom transformer initiated and if you perform dot fit now automatically fit happens and transformer happens so that's why i printed the statement so that it appears clear to you then you have a pipeline right now fit method it, it is fitted it is available for you directly you can predict it any your test data you're trying to print and all of the values uh, inside this spread values will be stored as i try to print that if i have executed right no i haven't executed uh, guys but i don't think so it will take long for you okay i've written wrongly yeah so this 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 is your value i've tried to pass down two values it gives uh, it's a kind of regression so it's 14 for first uh, row output and 17 for second row output i'm not concerned much on the output because i have i want to more explain on the pipeline steps how to do that how to do it. so this was a custom thing that we have and that was uh, more or not of a custom but trying to use the already built packages right so i think this is all guys uh, i will try to minimize this and then i will try to go on the slide there yes um, i think. yeah actually no one has posted questions on the q and a so i need to filter it out from the chat section okay. so like uh, can like you want me to read it out is it if it is okay with you or you can do it by yourself no, no, you can read it out, I think. Okay, so the question is asked by Sumit Kumar. How do we manage in case the data is to be updated regularly and uh, the data storage for model update and output to use case are different and it is separated from the pipeline, integrate it into it or create a new step that or keep it separated. Okay, I don't know what it means. <laughs> okay, no, it. no, no issues. We'll take it down. See, uh, that, that's quite a long, uh, many of the concepts that you have asked, uh, Sanjeev. It's good. But see, whenever you are creating a pipeline, there are a series of steps, right? Now, data updation, 
whenever your data is updated, so what what do you understand by data updation is you have a certain level of data. We are trying to train an ML model, right? You train your ML model. Now, if if your data is updated, that means the more data you have accumulated, right? You need to retrain your model. It adds in simple because uh, now if you have thousand data points and in future if you have five thousand data points, then that means you have to retrain your model because certain new properties to those data will come down, right? So you have to retrain. So retraining, you don't have to disturb your existing pipeline just because the same kind of pipeline architecture you'll be using, right? As soon even if uh, if there is a requirement, you need to customize, custom, uh, like you need to modify your pipeline, then you can modify it and retrain it. But if you want to apply a same set of pipeline, you just have to accumulate your new data, pass down into the pipeline, have your new model, right? And for storage, what you have, whatever you are asking, see storage, we have various options, right? Whenever you have ML models, you try to store them in cloud storage, or even you try to store them in disk storage. That uh, totally depends on the kind of uh, architecture you are using, right? If you are using a cloud-based architecture, you can use uh, cloud-based. Uh, if you are using AWS S3 buckets, you are using Azure, then blob storage. There are many options, right, for cloud. If you are using a VM level based infra infrastructure where you can store your models on the disk, then you can easily store your pipeline on the disk. And in further, if I will be talking about uh, the more operationalizing you do, you try to use now MLOP, that is machine learning operationalization, right? So you try to use the already uh, like already available tools that are there that try to do the same stuff for you. They try to store those models in the required storage. And even if you store your models on DB, people do that, right? So that totally depends on the kind of architecture you are following. And that whole together now is operationalized in the form of MLOps. So just try to look more into MLOps. I would say you will try to understand after the machine learning model building stage, how your further model goes into the deployment stage. And what you are talking about is retraining, your data getting modified. That all is handled using MLOps tool. You have to, you have to have sufficient knowledge how to do that. But yeah, whenever your data is being accumulated, you have to retrain it in the form. You have to apply. You have to give your data, give your new set of data in order to update your model. Uh, thanks, team. It was uh, wonderful having all of the participants and uh, you. And uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, we'll uh, connect soon.